Perfect. So, Martin, Kenneth, what do you think? Should we kick it off? Yep. Think so. Okay. Great. So again, welcome everybody who joined us just now. Uh, my name is Ivan Stanio. I'm with Resco, uh, and I have a great pleasure to welcome our partner from Denmark, Micro Partner, to this fireside chat. Today's Thank topic you. is how to cope with the challenges that the Dynamics 365 Business Central users face in the field. And I can't be more happy than welcome Matine and Kenneth from Micro Partner to really discuss this topic in details. A little bit of house cleaning information before we start the conversation. So all of you who joined us today using GoToWebinar are in listen only mode. That means that you're muted by default. I would, however, love to encourage you to post your questions uh, using the GoToWebinar application. We'll definitely dedicate some time towards the end of the webinar uh, to go over as many questions as we can. For those of you who want to make it more interactive, please raise your hand or pose the question uh, that you want to be unmuted and we can manage that as well. Uh, we can enable the microphone for you and then you can uh, unmute yourself. Uh, and also this webinar is recorded and afterwards we will share the recording um, and we'll most probably put it on YouTube, uh, on Resco's uh, uh, YouTube channel as well. So. That's for the intro, uh, Mata and Kenneth, welcome. Uh, how about a little bit of introductions about your company and yourselves, your roles with the company and your experience uh, with Microsoft Dynamics Business Central? Yes, no, thank you for letting us join, first off. Um, I think Matan, you'll do the general introduction. Of. Yeah, I will. Um, <clears throat> we represent MicroPartner. We are Danish Microsoft Dynamics partner. We, have, we primarily work with ERP and CRM, but also, of course, all the underlying technology, like the whole power platform and and so forth. So Azure, it's all uh, a necessary evil for us to uh, help our customers. Um, we've been in business for many years. Um, we have our original roots in the CRM world. And here the last three, four years, we've been working more and more with Business Central. Since Business Central becomes more part of the family by getting more and more into a .NET platform. Personally, I've been working with uh, ERP since 1997. Um, <clears throat> got my interest for CRM at a later point. Um, yeah, and since then, um, been helping clients. Okay. Yeah, my uh, uh, participation with MicroPartner uh, goes back about 11, 12 years. Um, uh, initially uh, starting out with the CRM uh, section of the company, but have moved into, of course, with the advent of mobile apps, specifically from uh, from Resco uh, and the interaction with the dynamic CRM. Um, picked up from there, uh, moved into the ERP world with the uh, onset of all this cloud migration that is going on, uh, where customers move from their uh, on-prem navigation systems to cloud-based Business Central and stuff. Uh, Resco uh, and, and the app to CRM has been something that we have been tracking for six, seven years, something like that. Uh, if you, you know, even longer than that. Yeah. Um, my role is as an architect and a senior developer. So when we got to the point where we faced some of the, the, the issues that we're going to challenge later, um, I got pulled in and, and had a look at what can we do in, in terms of quote unquote cutting out the middleman because we were faced with a setup that where we had to place dynamic CRM between the capabilities of the RESCO app and the ERP system uh, that the customer chose. So more on that on a later point. Yeah, we, we started working with uh, RESCO since RESCO already in the beginning had a excellent um, client for, uh, for CRM um, and it's been uh, ever since great so uh, we have a lot of experience with uh, with Resco we even have some customers who actually uh, only uses Resco because the uh, it's so intuitive but also more on that later mm -hmm. excellent yeah. thanks a lot for the intros uh, and for all the attendees I think this is a great combination of 
Martin on more on the business side and Kenneth more on the technical side. So it should definitely be an interesting discussion today. Uh, and also thank you for your support of Resco for so many years. Uh, awesome. Uh, so let's let's kick off the conversation with talking a little bit more general about business central market, right? Uh, you being from Denmark, that's pretty much where the predecessor of Business Central, uh, Navision product, was born and later on became uh, Dynamics NAV. And now we see that Business Central is getting really a big momentum. Can you help me understand a little bit better like what's going on with the, the Business Central market? What are customers doing? Is it a lot of customers switching from NAV to Business Central? Do we see a lot of net new customers? Um, and how does a typical cu uh, customer of Business Central looks like? Denmark has been, from the beginning, a true ERP country. It was not only Navision, we also had uh, the uh, Concord part, which was called AX, the later point is called Finance, and then we had uh, Navision, which at a later point became, uh, becomes uh, Business Central. Um, it's just the way the Danes have been working with the ERP system, doing the accountancy. It's a fairly standardized uh, method, which fits pretty much in almost every country. There are a few exceptions, like uh, when you come to Italy and you come to, um, to Spain, but basically it's been uh, a good base point for the ERP platform. Um, and since the vision has, has had since the beginning a lot of focus on global market, at least the European market. Uh, fairly early, they started to become very big in Germany. So it is a very well-founded uh, baseline for, for, for Navision, a lot of installations uh, throughout Europe and actually throughout the whole world. This has a legacy which goes 30 years back, so it has a lot of installations. And of course, Microsoft cannot dictate the customers to uh, go Cloudway from day one or immediately. Things take time. Uh, we, what we see a lot of companies, they are evolving into the cloud. You know, they don't do it in a, in just in one time, but they do it step by step. Um, so yeah, we we have a lot of online customers, but we also still have some on-premise customers, and they're easily steadily going into the cloud. It's uh, it's more natural of a way of doing it. Average size of deal size, it's, uh, it is difficult to, um, to say. It's, it also depends a little bit on which market we are we're talking about. Because when you go, when you, for instance, we come into the US market, uh, and, and a mid-sized company is enterprise in Europe. Um, but in, in, in the United States, everything is just bigger. So when we talk about a mid-sized company in Denmark, it's somewhere between 50 and 200 users. And in the US, it would be very small. So at least they, they claim. Uh, they pretend it to be. Um, so Business Central has always been in the in the mid-sized market as we see it. So somewhere between 10, five, maybe up to, all the way down to five users, all the way up to let's say 500. And there are there are exceptions that I know of that there are huge installations with a lot of users. So the system can handle it. And where finance, which is the old uh, AX, it is Microsoft's uh, aim and focus to to focus more on the higher market it's uh, it's more it's sap uh, killer in their opinion so mm -hmm. the average size it's 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 varies very much mm -hmm. it's somewhere about somewhere, somewhere around 20 to, to 30. perfect uh that that makes that makes absolutely sense and kenneth can you tell me a little bit more about the the architecture the underlying architecture of business central and i think you touched it a little bit in the introduction as well but business central is bringing kind of a new wind right especially when compared with navision or nav well um what the, the deep insights of uh, Business Central is uh, quote-unquote uh, unknown territory. It's uh, Microsoft only, of course. Uh, what we can see from the, 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 the perspective uh, as a, a partner is, of course, what Microsoft uh, has put out to us in terms of API access. Um, and looking back to Navision, uh, the, the capabilities in, in terms of interacting with the system has has greatly improved over time on the Navision Net platform itself. 
Uh, but with Business Central, Microsoft really took a, a great leap forward because in the end, Business Central is a cloud marketing uh, application, uh, whereas Navision, of course, is, is primarily on-prem uh, installations. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's really where we see the, the, the change in architecture. Um, now, I don't hope that Microsoft is listening in on this call because I'm about to claim that the underlying architecture of the two systems are close to identical. Um, what happened beneath is the same. Uh, as Matine said, it's a product that has been in development for 30 plus years, and you don't go in and change those fundamentals. They work. Uh, so the underlying architecture between the two systems are basically the same. It might be uh, offloaded and handled differently in terms of data storage and what have you. Uh, but our focus is really what is the two systems presenting to us in terms of capabilities for integrations. Uh, and that is where Business Central excelled uh, and has made very great leaps forward, allowing us to do what we are going to talk about in a second, namely integrating uh, Resco Cloud with uh, Business Central directly. Mm -hmm. but an important note on this matter is also that Microsoft has changed the underlying architecture in regards to how can you access data and what, it, what kind of developers tools um, are available for the customer or for to, or to the partner. This is why we see a lot of old NAV or Navision installations still, because a lot of customization can be done directly into the core of the system. And this is perfect, this is fine uh, for now, but when you get an upgrade or you get a later version, you have to move all this customization into the next version as well. This is why we see a lot of old uh, NAV uh, installations. With Business Central, it's completely different. You can't change the, the core, you can make extensions which lying next to it. This communicates with the platform. And this is necessary because you're always upgraded, you're always up to the latest version. Uh, even though if you have uh, 10,000 users and you tell Microsoft, please wait for your release, they will say, no way, you can postpone it a few times, but you're always up to the latest version. And we think this is great. And we've been we've been used to this for, since from our from our CRM days, and we've we've recognized that this is the way forward. Because in the end, it's the best for the customer and also for us. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Perfect. Let's move on a little bit and talk. I mean, we we touched it a little bit, right? Uh, why is it so popular? Uh, but maybe if we look at it from the bigger perspective and the role of Business Central in the Dynamics family, right? What do you what do you see? And we can totally stay focused on the Danish or Scandinavian market. We don't have to make it applicable globally. Uh, but where do you see Business Central compared to other ERP system or CRM system uh, that Microsoft provides? Well, first of all, Business Central it recognizes uh, international accounting systems standards um, as one of few. Um, also, what Business Central has been able, or Navision has always been very good at, is making localized versions for each country. So you had a worldwide version and then each country builds their own on top of that. This has changed a little bit in Business Central, but this is where, it, where, where we're coming from. This is why it's been hugely popular. And also, of course, Microsoft has had a lot of focus, sorry, Navision, they had a lot of focus on the, uh, on the global marketing. Yeah. From, from a different perspective, what I see is that you have a, as compared to other big scale ERP systems, you have a, a fairly rapid decision to deployment time. I mean, you, you can go in and, and you can use the out of box almost entirely. Instantly. Uh, but doing uh, customizations and, and specifics for your customer need, uh, your, your internal need, or, or in our case, our uh, uh, customer's needs, of course, uh, you can do that in, in a comparably low effort uh, and, and that is as far as i see it one of the reasons why microsoft has that great traction they have with business central mm -hmm. that's also, an I, think, point. I think that microsoft purchased Navision at the time mainly because microsoft is a partner driven company and Navision at the time is also a partner driven company so besides the core version there are thousands of, of third-party products which can uh, integrate with Central. 
Univision. So this is why this has a, such a huge uh, install base. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's an interesting point. I wanted to ask, like, what do you see typically in terms of how long it takes to implement Business Central? And we don't have to be exact to days, but is it a question of months, years, several months, few months? You know, what what have you seen in your in your experience? If we do a good job, we'll mm -hmm. never finish because the world is ever changing, and so should the ERP system. But of course, initially to get started, it depends very, very much because even though Business Central is supposedly to be a mid-sized system, it is actually covering manufacturing, uh, service, service management, sales, of course, all invoicing, and so you can. It is actually a rather large system. So it depends very much. If it's just a basic uh, ERP or let's financial system. You can put in a standard financial system in four or five days. I mean, installing it takes five seconds. So uh, there you go. Somewhere between five seconds and in uh, five days. <laughs> That's a great Some answer. Base, base system set up. Yeah, I mean, I just yeah. had a discussion with one of my colleagues the other day, and he said, "Well, uh, customers thought that we I suggested them to to have a look at the, the chart of accounts, for instance." And I mean. If they don't want to have a look at it, they would use just use uh, standards. It takes no time at all. Mm -hmm. So it is a matter of uh, approach and how you would like to work with the system, and also how much would you like to adopt your processes to the system, or should we adopt the system to our process? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, makes perfect sense. Great. And of course, also it's a matter of budget. I mean. mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you already touched it a little bit, Martin, right? That the, the business central as a system can be pretty robust and cover a lot of areas. And one of them you actually mentioned in the previous segment was service and customer service, uh, but also sales and other areas. And that's that's actually the topic of our of our discussion today. Uh, what do what what are some of the challenges that the business central users face when they're in the field? Uh, yes. So what do you see in terms of challenges there? Uh, you work with a lot of companies, you know the system very well. What are some of the companies seeing like, okay, we need to find a solution to this particular problem? Of course, Business Central can do a lot of things, but not everything. <clears throat> um, it is good in planning, it's good in uh, when, you have, when you have to buy things, when you have to calculate the correct price uh, doing your uh, chart of accounts, doing your invoicing, etc., etc. Um, Basically, everything you do in the office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But since a company is not only in the office, I mean, at least some companies they have uh, outgoing salespeople, they have people uh, doing uh, a repair, uh, how do you call it? Repairs. Sorry. <laughs> repair. Sorry, doing mm -hmm. repairs or doing maintenance on on uh, sold equipment. Um, there's a missing link in, in Business Central because you can do all the planning, you know, everything on site you can do, but if you've sent someone out or someone who's even not in the office, I mean, in Denmark, Denmark is not a large country, but still, when you have a company based in uh, in Copenhagen and you have technicians in the other end of the country, uh, they don't come to the office every day. So you need some sort of a communication uh, platform and also a handler, meaning that if you're in the system, I would like to make sure that I have a specific task in terms of a contract or um, um, a service, I would like to push this information directly to people's uh, calendar. And this is something where Business Central is not very good at. Microsoft has some solutions for it. Business Central is a Microsoft solution, but it is just not every, not every solution for Microsoft is a, a good fit for each company. And this is where, where, where Resco came into the picture because Resco has a great way of doing planning and doing field servers and having technicians and having a simple app on the phone or on the iPhone and did you get the best of both worlds and, and I, I would like to highlight the, what Matthias said simple yeah. uh, because not it's not for everyone to use business central it's a big system there is a lot of information there's a lot of ways to get at the information uh, there is most typically a well-defined execution order if you want to achieve this, you have to go through step A, B, C, D, E, and F in order to get there. 
Uh, and if you are delivering services, that's really not one you want to spend your time on. I mean, you want to fix the car engine, you want to repair the uh, oven or whatever it is. Uh, and then you want to register uh, what you did, where you did it, how you did it. Uh, and not necessarily that order every time. Uh, and that is where we see a application as Resco come in to really fill out the gaps uh, that is in that process where you where you go from the planning and and controlling the service to actually executing uh, on on the service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we had we had a specific case. It also while we're sitting here, we've done some uh, business cases where we combine Business Central with uh, Resco, and in one specific case. We actually sold a another field service solution to the customer, and when we got started, it became quite soon and quite uh, obvious that it was way overkill because this other field service solution could actually also function standalone. It is a very large system, and it has you have to follow this specific steps every time, otherwise the chain breaks. There's Compresco has a much better easier way of, of doing a, flex, a flexible implementation because you can keep some of the business logic in business central and the only thing we use from resco is actually the planning and, and the, the fulfillment so this is why it was a no-brainer for this customer to say okay let's not do this with the other uh, field service let's let's use have a look at resco and we mm -hmm. had, uh, we had uh, some workshops and they loved it mm -hmm. so what I'm hearing, I'll, I'll try to sum it up, right? To make sure that I understand everything correctly. So Business Central being a robust system is great, but there are certain areas where, let's say there are some, some gaps, right? And those gaps are usually in the field. So somebody who's executing the, the job, who's doing the work and needs to have a tool that allows them to stay connected with the system, with the headquarters, with the central, uh, uh, office and also be able to do that job in the field in the best way and instead yeah, of, of trying to in, impl implement or integrate business central with other robust systems that would cover this resco seems to be a good fit because it's it's relatively simple yet quite powerful for the those experiences in the field and quite easy to implement would that be kind of pretty much correct yeah, exactly. At I mean, least that, that's our conviction. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but it's quite normal. I mean, every today in today's market, I mean, Business Central doesn't have a payroll system. This is why I do integration with the payroll system. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have integration to all the banking systems. Why you have a banking uh, vendor, which which is a third-party product. So for us, and we're used to working with third-party products combined with uh, standard Microsoft products. So it's 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 for us, it's uh, business as usual. Mm -hmm. Best of breed. Mm -hmm. Perfect. To be uh, popular. So we touched a little bit on this one, uh, but I thought it would be good to to discuss this in a little more detail. And I think you're in a unique position because you have a lot of experience with Resco. You've seen a lot of customers using it, and now we're trying to bring that functionality to business central customers as well. Uh, and Resco is pretty well known for that extreme focus, almost like a laser focus on things that are happening in the mo mobile world or in the field, right? Yeah. Uh, based on your experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you can give us a, an example of what customers like or why yeah, they- but also, I mean, we're also a customer. We are Resco's customer, so I can, I can give my own opinion. When we started working with Resco, at the time, this is a long time ago, but at the time we had two major field service solutions or two mobile solutions, it was CWER and it was Resco. We had two people on a two days training to install the other solution and they never actually got it to work. And when we started looking at Resco, it took us uh, literally five minutes and we had something up and running. That's the difference. Also, for us, it's very important when we choose partners to work with, is that we have a good back office, meaning that if we run into an issue, we have a good partner on the other end who can help us um, in, a, in, a, in a very fast and professional manner. And this has always been good for us to work with Resco together. So, 
this is maybe not why people like working with Resco, but for the technology. But I do think it is because when you talk about technology, you don't want all the hassles. It just make it work, fix it. This is what Resco for us. The reason why we choose Resco and not the other part. Mm -hmm. And totally valuable because end of the day, Resco works with partners such as MicroPartner, right? So the, the experience of a partner is really crucial for us at Resco as well. Uh, so yeah, that, yeah, that another, another thing is you can see it is designed for 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 touch screens. It is designed for mobility. Uh, it's been it has it's born in the cloud. It's been from the beginning. It's been uh, much focused on user friendliness, and maybe it's not as fancy as, as many other systems, but it's it works and people love it. So mm -hmm. I think that also uh, okay now today in today market it's not. See, because Microsoft other other systems are also getting along. Of course, I mean you can't be the front runner all the time, but uh, because mobility is very important also when you talk about uh, offline mobility. And this has never been a problem with Resco because it's been able to do so all the time. This was also for us the reason to choose Resco because it just works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that description and I think we see ourselves a little bit like that. We're like that 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 workhorse, you know, that when you're in trouble, it always it always works, it always pulls no matter whether you're you're in you know some 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 very demanding challenging conditions or areas with no connectivity or you need to have very configured version that's where we excel right offline mobile first working on any device that we can find out there it can be configured so it's it's nice and easy with as many taps or clicks as possible and needed and always secure, always um, always encrypted database uh, with the ability to wipe out the data, uh, lock the application and things like that. So thinking about a lot of the enterprise uh, uh, aspects of, of, uh, of the requirements that companies now have on mobility. And that brings me to another point uh, that you're right, there's a lot of other mobile solutions right now, right? But we feel like for us it was it was the one thing that we did from the very beginning of the company. So there's so much experience and knowledge about mobile applications, mobile development approaches, and how customers approach mobility, what they expect, uh, that we put all of that knowledge into our technology. Uh, while some of the other companies that I see, they're extending their capabilities so they also work on a mobile device. So it's a little bit of a different approach if you will or or a little bit of a different philosophy we're mobile first some other companies are mobile as well yeah true mm -hmm. and from a from a design perspective but i really like the way that resco from the beginning again uh, due to the, uh, the the focus on being able to provide offline capabilities uh, kind of a now I'm putting uh, uh, something into a system that might not be intentional, uh, but it seems so. Um, the fact that you limit data by design when you create an app in, in Resco, it, it's just, that's how everybody should do it. Mm -hmm. So as, from a design perspective, that's really one of the things I love about uh, the Resco product is I sit down and I define a uh, service technician app and I define exactly what data should go out to this particular group of people without exposing exposing the entire data structure of our uh, system behind. Uh, so if, knock on wood and, uh, and what have you, uh, a device is lost, at least I know it's only the data from this user that is on that device. Yeah, and and that's from a, a data security perspective. Just as I said, that's how everybody should do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a really good example, and it brings brings some some memory because when Resco, let's say, fifteen fifteen and more years ago, when we were creating applications, you know, those devices didn't have four gigabytes of memory and processors that uh, that can compete with computers right now, right? So it was a different world. So it was always a matter of balance between giving the user enough 
in terms of experience, the user experience, but also making sure that the application is still still running well and is fast and uh, and responsive, etc. Uh, so that's one aspect of it. But also, it's more about the business or use case, right? Why should a user see the entire database if they're only working in certain territory with certain number of customers that that they service and things like that so it's a lot of it's a lot of i think kind of the business logic behind that as well absolutely mm -hmm. good uh with the business central though we're going a little bit beyond just the traditional mobility that that rescue customers know uh, right and it's obviously it's the mobile first uh, experience and perfect uh, uh, optimization of of the applications for the mobile devices but we're bringing a lot of lot more functionality for business central customers and we mentioned it in the beginning as well uh, uh, of our discussion when you said that yeah it's the execution but also somebody who needs to oversee what's going out in the field right so the ability to schedule the ability to see the results uh the questionnaires the checklists uh all the data collected out in the field so we're introducing resco inspections for business central as well and a simple functionality around work order and asset management, uh, because while Business Central has some functionality in this area, it's not the traditional work order as we know it from the field service world. Uh, any comments here? I mean, uh, it's again from the design. Uh, it once you have the two systems connected, and I'm pretty sure that's uh, going to be on the slide in a second or two, so I'm not going. To go too deeply into it, uh, but once you kind of have your base information in Resco, as you state here, expanding that to an umbrella of functionalities, if you like, it, it's just uh, it's just what quote unquote Business Central is is missing. Um, Business Central has a, is specifics and it does it well, uh, and uh, and then Resco just it builds upon that. And, and give functionality to uh, to the to the organization, and and I kind of love that. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, we're getting towards the uh, end of the of the prepared content, uh, so uh, just a shout out to all the attendees. This is the time to start uh, putting your questions uh, out there. Uh, but we have we already received a couple of questions as well, so we have definitely something to talk about. Uh, but before we get there to the Q and A, uh, where do we see the the cooperation between micro, micro partner and Resco going? Uh, I know that you have uh, that you have your own solution, which I would really love to learn more about. Uh, but also, it would be interesting to hear what your plans are for the rest of the year and what we're going to do together. Yeah, well, as you mentioned there, we have a scaffolding uh, solution, a vertical solution here in Denmark, with potential for uh, a global solution, of course. But for now, we are mainly focusing on Denmark. Um, and scaffolding is, uh, again, a solution based on Business Central. Um, we have a portal where people can, um, can register their hours and time and material. But we also like to expand it with, uh, with, with Resco because we have an inspector who is doing a, a how do you call it, workplace evaluation on site and do a lot of visual controls. There's a lot of safety involved. Um, the scaffolding, it can be very high and, it, and there's a lot of focusing on, here in Denmark at least, on the, on the, on the safety for the, for the people. So there's a lot of uh, control and elements. So why not also uh, use RESCO for that? For now, we, uh, we build it in, in another uh, platform. But we are looking into it pretty far, actually, on uh, also um, delivering Resco clients for uh, for this. And then, yeah, we're going to uh, to Directions together with uh, with Resco. Directions is a this is a partner event for um, for, for Business Central uh, partners. It's going to be in Hamburg in what was it October or December? Can I remember? Yeah. Yeah. In the fall, I think. Yeah, October or November. Yeah. And besides of that, we just keep on focusing on um, on Resco. And what we normally always do is that we have a look a look at the customers' needs. And I mean, we are 
the trusted advisor, as you call it. So if the customer has the need for for a, a mobile solution, we always bring up Risco because it's a great way of, of even though you have a we do Microsoft CRM solutions, you have actually a free solution from, from Microsoft, but a lot of the times it's just not a good fit. This is why we we discuss it with our customer. I mean, and we just uh, bring up to say, have a look at, uh, at Resco. And again, within a few minutes, you're up and running, at least, so it seems. Um, and then they can try it out and give it to the salespeople. Actually, a lot of times when I'm doing new car, new clients or new installations, I often just give them a, a link to Resco, have a look at it, how it works. And it's almost sells itself, so, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that's a nice description of it, uh, definitely. Uh, and I know we're also working on a case study together uh, that oh, yeah. should come yes. out very soon. Correct. Uh, it's been a little bit uh, postponed because there was some difficulties, not with the system or anything, but uh, Corona and some people got sick and then, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's coming up. It is, uh, it is a great uh, story for a, a company here in Denmark. I believe it's a mid-sized solution. I believe there are about 20... 2025 um, technicians uh, driving around all in all the, the whole country, uh, business central in in the back office, um, doing uh, service contracts, uh, making service orders, do the planning in Resco, and do the do the field service in Resco, of course, and completely integrated with each other. That's a great case, and it's built on the connector from um, from uh, from Resco and build on uh, standard integration tools from Microsoft. I mean, what we always try to do is to, I mean, Microsoft has the tendency to just add to the stack. I mean, um, when you actually have a look at what you actually have bought, open up for your Office 365 or Microsoft 365, let's call it today, and there's a huge amount of, of functionality in the background with a lot of companies never ever have a look at because it's way too technical. So they just, purchase any any products maybe they already have the technology but they just don't know it yet this is where we come in so the integration between business central and and resco is based on standard microsoft technology which is almost it is microsoft so it's almost free of charge so meaning it's uh, when you use microsoft flow um and you use the power automate uh, solution it is consumer based meaning you pay for for use but it's really really cheap so, mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of work. Anything to add? I think that covers it pretty much. I mean, we have, it was planned to be 40 minutes, right? Yeah, and we're at 41, so look at us. I okay. think perfect, perfect. Any good questions? Uh, but we are not wrapping up things just yet. Uh, now is the Q&A part. Uh, and of course, if you'll have questions later on, or would love to get in touch with MicroPartner and Matine, you can see Martin's email address on the screen right now. Uh, uh, and let's tackle the questions that people submitted as part of the registration. We had two. So the first one, and we can look at it from both the, the technical point of view and the business point of view. So the first question is from um, our dear friend Torsten from Psycor in Germany. Can you please, this is concerning projects for contractors, okay? Can you explain the licensing conditions when using this feature, meaning Resco for Business Central, I assume, especially when contractors are using the app only occasionally? I can do that. Mm -hmm. um, License-wise, when you do integrations and you move data between the two databases and you do not use the forms or the entities, uh, the views from, from the system, and as long as you're licensed to um, to transport the data, you're allowed to do so. So you don't have you don't have a have a license for the ERP when you're presenting it, for instance, in Resco or Excel or whatever. So as long as you're licensed on the Power Platform, on the Resco license, of course, very important, and also on the Business Central part. Mm -hmm. So any any license could could be used to access the data. I believe. I mean, you can either use a uh, you can use a sales team member, sorry, team member in Business Central, or you can use an essential license or a premium user. It doesn't matter. It's just the access. We we recommend to have 
one specific uh, user in Business Central, which is the uh, the owner of the, the data, which comes in, flows in and out, right? And uh, if we tie it back to uh, the scaffolding uh, project that we're doing, so you, you might have, I don't know how it is in other countries, but in Denmark, it might not be where you want or do your full career. So they, they have a pretty high turnaround in terms of employees. But each employee needs to be able to register what they did on, a, on any given day. Um, but your workforce is interchangeable to a high degree. Uh, so facilitating Gresco to, to be the kind of the front end for the, uh, the, the workforce uh, allows you to just have that one license in Business Central, uh, which will then register on, on the ERP system uh, what was done, uh, where it was done, uh, and so on and so forth. It's like a gateway. Uh, yeah. So it, it acts like a gateway, uh, and, and that keeps your licensing cost down. Uh, of course, you could enable all those workers uh, in Business Central, uh, create an app that wrote data directly, but that would have to be a, on a per user level. Uh, from a licensing perspective. Uh, but seeing that it's just one system connecting to Business Central, that's one license. Mm -hmm. And thank, thank you both, because uh, I think this partially answers the other question that we received from Tom Gerhard Nilsson from Made for Movement Group. He asked, why not create a Resco app directly on the Dynamics Business Central platform? No need for the Resco cloud integration. And I think the licensing piece is part of the answer, uh, but the technology and the functionality is also part of the, the, the answer, right? Kenneth, I think you, you uh, wanted to add something to that. Yeah, and, and uh, it's, so in, in Resco, we have a, a uh, per entity update happening. So if, if we go in on an account form and, and change a number of fields, then we submit that change as one change. Uh, in Business Central, if you go into a, a customer form or uh, any other form in Business Central, then every field you change this will be registered as a single change to the system. Okay. Um, and and the order of <clears throat> updates in Business Central will have dramatic effects. I might be doing it over the top here, uh, but it, it can affect your end result. Uh, if if you're working with uh, transactional data. Uh, the order in which you do updates will have a, a, an effect on the end result. Um, and by doing a app to cloud, uh, to, to RESCO cloud, to business central approach, uh, you, you can better control that full uh, customer update to, uh, uh, to the back end systems. Very important. What we've done is that. <clears throat> To keep the business logic from Fresco and to keep the business logic from Business Central, we've created a plugin in CRM, Fresco Cloud. We have a plugin in Business Central, meaning that the only thing we move between those two systems is a data sync object. It's just an XML file. So when we receive data in one system, we use the logic from the system to translate this to create an order, for instance, when we receive an order or we receive a, how do you call it, a time entry or work order from, from Resco inside Business Central, we can use the business logic from Business Central to create a record. We don't have to write directly a record into Business Central because then it gets complicated because then you have to do it in the exact right, right order. When we use the internal functions from Business Central, we don't have to worry about it at all because it's just a, a much simpler integration we can do. And mm -hmm. we keep the logic, keep the logic in each system. So when Resco makes a change or Business Central makes a change, which you do, I don't know, once a week, um, we don't have to worry that the things suddenly fall apart. Mm -hmm. As long as we keep the, the, the data format in in place and we use the methodology from, from, from Business Center or Resco. So if they don't change the function to create a new account, we're all good. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Uh, it
the, the, there's a new question that uh, Dieter Eggert posted, and I think it's a really nice segue of these three. They 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 really are very related. So Dieter asks, what are the does Resco have a ready business central integration? Right. See, the answer is yes. We have actually provided integration using Power Automate, but we also uh, build our own integration uh, using APIs. And I would ask you, Matthijn and Kenneth, what have you done with your customer, right? How did you integrate Resco and Business Central? And I think you partially touched it as already, but that's the yeah. question we got. Well, uh, we, of course, was... Uh ready to jump out of the uh, starting blocks when uh, you guys first introduced the power uh, um, platform adapter to Resco, uh, because it's uh, it, it's really a nice fit into how we at MicroPartner think about uh, integrations. Uh, as Matan said, we prefer to keep business logic within the business system. Um, I've personally seen way too many integration projects fail or uh, go way beyond what was estimated in terms of delivery time because the business or the, the, the team doing the integration have to understand how the integrated system works on a very low technical level. So back to business central, if you do updates in a specific order, you get a one result. If you change the order, you get a different result. And that's difficult for an integration team to know all that information. They have to know the tree system, they have to know the control system, and they have to understand the integration. Yeah. This so the, just the tricky part. Yeah. So so what we do, as Matan said, we, we work with a, a data transfer object. Uh, it could be XML, it could be JSON, it could be a CSV uh, format, doesn't really matter. Uh, as long as it's a agreed data format that each business systems will be able to understand and translate into their internal data structure. Um, and, and keeping with that, well, we can facilitate uh, Power Automate, for example, uh, in terms of uh, doing all authentication and, and offloading the, the connectivity between systems. Um, so that's our approach. Um, at least nine hours, 10 times, that's how we go, uh, say, Um the, uh, the the standard integration that comes quote unquote out of the box to uh, uh, between uh, Business Central and and Resco is great. It, it works, um, but we just want to add a little on top, uh, and and that's why we use the uh, connector uh, to um, to move the objects for us. Also, because we always have customers who want to do things exactly what's not in the box. So we have to be able to add something to the box, and this is why we put in an extra box to do the better integration. Perfect. Dieter, I, I hope that that answers your question. And there's an, uh, an additional one from Dieter as well. What which features in Business Central are covered in Resco? And I thought maybe rather than talking about in a in a theoretical way, maybe I could point that question to you. What do you've seen your customers bringing into the or bridging over to the Resco platform from Business Central? Calculated fields, mm -hmm. for instance. <clears throat> when you open an, uh, an account in, in, um, in Business Central, you will see a lot of information, <clears throat> but you can actually also see calculated fields. I mean, every time you open the, the account, it, the value is calculated at the moment you look at it. Next time you open it, it can be a different value. This is not something which easily integrated into Resco. It can be done, but then you have to use some sort of middle way. Again, this is where our tool comes in, in the picture. Mm -hmm. Anything there? No. Otherwise, okay. it's, uh, does the API, uh, we can just about anything we can move between the systems? Well, uh... On the business central side, there are uh, certain data structures that are quote unquote off limits. Uh, it, it's not uh, made accessible. Uh, and that's also one of the reasons why we go with the architecture that, uh, that, that we prefer, because once you're on the inside, basically anything's allowed. Uh, of course, you need to uh, confer to business uh, logic and, and uh, anything else that goes on, on, on the inside. But 
uh, you really have the, the full system available uh, once you do extensions inside Business Central. Uh, so that, that's really a, a, an option. If you, if you need to open up the box and do things that Microsoft does not expose on the API level. Um, and there are quite some things Microsoft do not expose on the API level. Yeah. So, and in, in terms of bridging the gaps, where, where do we put in, um, so with the service order, for example, uh, and, and service delivery, uh, <coughs> Business Central is, is great as doing kind of a, a, a high level, which orders go where. Um, but doing a full maintenance of uh, technicians, who's available on what side at what point in time, and that's a, an area where uh, Resco excels uh, in 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 a way that Business Central never will. And so, the the uh, the service planning engine available in Resco is uh, is just miles ahead uh, when it comes to the the finer generality. Uh, where you want to put a specific technician on a specific task, uh, so that that is uh, definitely a, a place where we extend Business Central into Resco because we just have the the better of the two worlds. Uh, so having a uh, Business Central do the the rough planning, uh, these services go to this service center, and then use Resco inside each service center to do the finer. Uh, planning uh, and execution. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you so much. I'm looking. I don't see any more questions. So this is the last chance for anybody who has uh, anything to add from the audience. It can be a comment. It can be in feedback. It can be just some ideas you want to share. Uh, but I'm not seeing anything. So at this point, Martin, Kenneth, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciated our talk. I see uh, many people stayed towards the end of the of the webinar. Uh, so hopefully we provided some some really valuable content Hi. and thoughts. Uh, and I look forward to meeting you in person, hopefully soon, and uh, some more work that we will be able to do together as uh, MicroPartner and, and Resco. Thank you. Thank you for uh, letting you. us uh, have our say uh, and introduce uh, a, a couple of uh, our ideas. Uh, hopefully some of them will stick and, and will uh, give you guys out there something to work on, uh, something to, to think about. And of course, go ahead with your next uh, Business Central Resco project. It works. <laughs> Thanks a lot for your kind words. Okay, thank you everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day uh, and look for some more fireside side chats from uh, from Resco in the future. Thank you everybody and take care. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.